<laughs> little echo here. Maybe I'm hot. There you go. You bet. Thank you. There you go. I want to thank the band. Golly, they they show up every Sunday. I don't know if all of you realize how blessed we truly are to have. We have the best band around. I guarantee you that. Don't you agree? Well, you know, I knew that song was going to get you kicked off. It it does me every time I hear it. And uh, if any of you are sleeping, I'm sure you're not now. Uh, you know, it's an uplifting, exciting song. Uh, you know, as uh, as you know, the song they're talking about Jesus. I mean, the Lord. He's still in the fire. Amen. And he's telling us a simple story about Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego that is found in the book of Daniel. He's, basically, the song's telling a condensed version of, of the story. Amen? And you can find that in Daniel chapter 3, verse 10 in the Old Testament. I've used this scripture in many of my messages. So instead of me reading it today, I want to encourage you to read the scripture yourself. You know, I don't mind telling you that little uh, Reader's Digest small story there. We'll condense it down a little bit for you. But basically, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego were told they were going to have to bow down to Nebuchadnezzar and his, his uh, images. And they said, no, we're not going to do that. We're only going to bow to God, the one and only God, right? So he decides that since they're not going to do that, he's going to throw them in a fire. And he does that. They still would not give in. And the story tells us that this fire was so hot. It was so intense. So intense. There's no way these men would survive. But when the king looked down in the fire, there weren't three men but four. That means the Lord was walking with them. Amen. And it tells us that there was not one smell of smoke on any of these men. They were totally 100% protected. Isn't it good to know he's still in the fire today? Today, right here in our own country, there are fires everywhere. And I'm not talking about just the fires that are being set by the riots or the fires burning in California or Colorado. I'm talking about all the fires that we can find burning out of control in our daily lives with what's going on in today's society it seems so many at this time in our country, in our world, it's become a scary place for many people. It's the uncertainty that scares people. We have this ugly election happening. People in our own country showing disrespect and evil toward one another. Along with this pandemic that's been going on that, once again, needs to be respected but it's being used as a political tool to scare people. People are in, are in such conflict with one another right now today that there are some that are trying to scare people into doing and saying things they'd never do or say before. It's a scare tactic. And it's going on not with our political environment, with, on social media and everything else, but with people talking to one another. I think two things are happening. No one's disrespect, the other one's common sense. It's gone away. And uh, there's no moral value, it seems like, in America as there was once before, and it becomes a problem. You know, with the corruption, slander, accusations, and lies, that's become the commonplace in our society today. And it's driving many of the issues that are going on at this time. I've even had some people that I've spoken to that say uh, they're not afraid. But their actions and their comments reveal that they are living in fear. And as Christians and children of God, we do not have anything to fear. Amen? Joshua chapter 1 verse 9. 
reading from the NLT. Joshua chapter 1, reading, reading from verse 9. This is my command. Be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid or discouraged. For the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. Now, it's easy to read that. And it's easy, you're easy to understand what that means. But the hard part's believing it. Amen? So you have to ask yourself, do I truly believe and trust in the Lord? That... His promise right here is going to happen for me. You know, we don't have to bow down to things of this world. In the midst of the fire and conflict, we can remain true and faithful to God, despite what the consequences might be on the other side. If we look back through the Bible, we'll notice that there were many times, just like in right here with Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, there were consequences for what they did when they stood their ground. They weren't afraid. They knew there was going to be something, consequences on the other side, but they believed in the Almighty Lord so much that they didn't care. They're willing to face those consequences and put all their faith in the Lord for the protection that they need. Sometimes we're just afraid of the consequences. Sometimes we won't speak up or stand firm because of the consequences, what somebody's going to say and somebody's going to do. But if you're standing on the almighty word of God, you have nothing to fear. You can stand your ground, and it's okay to speak up on his behalf. Amen? Isaiah chapter 43, beginning at verse 2, once again, reading from the NLT. Isaiah chapter 43, beginning at verse 2. When you go through deep waters, I will be with you. When you go through rivers of difficulty, you will not drown. When you walk through the fire of oppression, you will not be burned up. The flames will not consume you. That's a promise. That's a promise. That's, that's where we have to stand. We have to stand believing that God's with us through every fiery test that we go through. Isaiah, we are told, according to the Bible, he was an Israelite prophet from Judah. And that gives his name as a composer of this book. His name in Hebrew means the Lord saves. One amazing thing that's revealed in the story of Daniel, I mean of um, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, that, that I came across and probably never really thought of it this way till I read this. But one thing that was amazing is that the heat coming out from that furnace was so intense that it killed the soldiers that threw the men into it. That means on the outside it was really hot, just as it was on the inside. But if you look at it this way, the soldiers couldn't take the heat. But Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego knew how to take the heat. Amen? So the, that's right. If you can't take the heat, get out of the kitchen. How many of you can say, I can take the heat today? Because Jesus Christ is right there with me. Because the heat's going to come. It comes every day in our lives in some way or some form. So the question today is, can you take the heat? Well, as Christians, we'd better know how to take the heat, whatever that heat might look like. And if you're not a Christian, I'd say get adjusted. Amen? Because there's going to be some heat. And I'm sure it's going to be intense. The heat I'm referring to today, it can come from many different sources we know. Life itself. The difficulty of life is part of the friction of our normal human existence. And there's nothing really we can do about it. The heat's going to come. Mistakes? We all make mistakes. But sometimes the mistakes that we make are particularly painful 
and hurtful to others or in our lives. We have afflictions. There's many times when we are persecuted. When someone from outside intentionally inflicts pain and difficulty upon us. Someone may be dealing with that today. But the challenge in all these situations is to come out on the other side of these fires unscathed with no burns at all. And the only way you can do that is make sure he's in the fire with you. We really have two choices right here when we see this. We can either let the trial by fire be the defining moment in our destiny so that we smell like fire the rest of our lives or we can put our trust in God to walk through it and move on in our lives. Sometimes that's what we do. We have these fires going on in our lives and we don't know how to put them out. So we walk around smelling like smoke all the time. Sometimes we wonder why people don't want to be around us. That could be it. Because what you're dragging around, God doesn't want you dragging around. If you're in the midst of a fire, it's time to put the fire out or get the man to walk through it with you, right? And he's the one going to help you put it out. Because we all have them. You know, there may be someone here today that's going through a fiery trial right now. It may seem that they're thinking, man, I just don't know what to do. And if you're that person, I want to share this with you. There's a man that walked through that fiery trial with you if you only call on his name. And that's the name of Jesus Christ. Deuteronomy chapter 31, looking at verse 6. Deuteronomy chapter 31, you know, verse 6. It says, Be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid or terrified because of them. For the Lord your God goes with you. He will never leave you nor forsake you. That's a promise of God. God's word. And God's word is always truth. So how can we wonder, is that really truth? You know, as we read our Bibles, we find as we read that God walked in the fire with many others. God walked with Noah. He walked through with him through the flood. To Noah, that was probably a fiery test, even though it was a flood. You can find that in Genesis 6, chapter 6, verse 9. God walked with Joseph through his many trials. Many of us know Joseph, his brothers were pretty mean. Threw him in a well, wanted him to die, pulled him out of there, sold him into slavery. He spent time in prison. But the Lord walked with him. And he come out on the other side with a sweet smell of success. You can find that in Genesis chapter 3 verse 7. And God walked with Moses. When he went to Egypt to free God's people. You know, that was tough. What God wanted him to do. And they say Moses was, he stuttered. That made it even more difficult. God said, I'll put my words in your mouth. I'm going to walk through this fire with you. When they found themselves at the Red Sea, trapped, God sent fire then to block the soldiers and part the seas so people could just go right on the cross. But they believed, and they trusted. And the Lord walked through that fiery test with them. You can find that in the book of Exodus. And God walked with David. God walked with David when he faced the giant Goliath. Ooh, a little young boy there. 
Now that's a fiery test. Especially when he tells Goliath, you come against me with sword and shield, but I come against you with the almighty word of the Lord. That means the Lord was walking with him through that fiery test. You know, someone shared with me the other day, I was visiting with a relative, and they said their favorite person in the Bible was Moses because of all the things he endured and all the things he went through, and he stayed faithful to the Lord. She asked me, she said, "What? who's your favorite person in the Bible? I told her David. And I like Peter because I'm a lot like Peter, but I like David. David was a man after God's own heart, but David... He went through some fiery tests because he fell down. He sinned. He made mistakes. He had afflictions. But the Lord was right there with him. Walking him right through it. Did he suffer the consequences? Yes. But he kept his life. And the Lord walked right with him, right through it. Isn't it great to know we have a loving and forgiving God? Because we'd all be toast right now, right? I know with all the things I've seen, I I don't need to be in God's place. We'd all be in trouble. (laughs) Because of judgment. God doesn't look at who we are. He looks at our heart. He's not looking at what's on the outside. He's looking at the heart. In your heart, you have to place that trust very deep down in your heart. You've got to believe. But you also have to call on the Lord. He wants to know you're there. We can walk around and say we love the Lord and all that. But do we tell him? Do we talk to him? The Bible is really clear that we'll have problems in our lives. That's no doubt. Even as Bible-believing Christians, we're going to have trials, and we're going to have fiery moments in our lives. The Bible is real clear about that. John 16, verse 33, and Jesus speaking here, says, In this world you will have trouble. Now, that's pretty direct. Right out of Jesus' mouth. In this world you will have trouble. Can anybody attest to that? Have you had trouble? Even as Christians? Because as a Christian, Satan, he's more after you than he is anybody else. And if you're hanging on the fence, you better hold on. His goal is to pull you out of God's pasture and into his. But we also know that we don't have to go through any of those troubles or fires or problems. We don't have to go through theirs alone. Because... In John 16, 33, Jesus also says, but take heart, I have overcome the world. Oh, man. It's not going to run away. I have overcome the world. He knows right now what that fiery test that you're going through or trial right now is. He knows. But I always say it this way. He wants to know you know. And he wants you to share it with him. Ask him to jump in that fire with you. Walk through it. And if you do that, and you do it his way, not yours, get over out of the way and do it his way. Make sure you're following him. Don't get out in front of him. You'll come out on that other side smelling very sweet. Even in this church, we've been through some fiery trials. In the past, probably going to see some in the future. They come. Many of you may remember one trial where your pastor chose to have church service against the will of the fire marshal. (laughs) Even then... God walked with us even through this little fire that was (laughs) self-created. And we came out on the other side. Look at us today. 
the elders and I felt a little intense heat in that situation. Just a little bit. But because God heard our prayers, he walked us through this and provided us a way to come out on the other side without a bad smell at all. I think even the fire marshal likes us now. <laughs> I don't know about me, but if it's a church. Just little memories. We're making memories, amen. So even I can make mistakes. But when those makes, some mistakes are made, it's time to call on the Lord. Help me here. This is one I can't handle myself. I made the mess. Now you come clean it up for me. <laughs> I'm sure thankful once again that we have a forgiving and loving God. And he loves everyone, not just me. He loves all of us. So we should walk away here today with these four things in mind. Number one, difficult situations will come our way, but they provide us an opportunity to turn and trust the Lord and maybe even share with someone else that's in difficulty at this time what the Lord can do for them as they did for you. Number two, settling, compromise for a situation is never worth it. Even when we are being threatened, obeying God is worth whatever the cost will be. Some people struggle with that. I mean, I don't know if it's worth it. You'll know in the end. But I'd say to you today, whatever you're doing for the Lord is worth it. And expected. Number three, the Lord is always with us, whether it's through a literal or figurative fiery test, the Lord will not leave us. Remember in Deuteronomy, He will not leave us. Number four, when we trust God through our difficulties, we can come out on the other side, free from the smoky smell of bitterness. Resentment, frustration, and anger. We can come out with the sweet smell of Jesus Christ. No matter what your fire looks like or how big it is, call on the Lord to walk through it with you so you might come out on that other side with no burns and smelling sweet. One of the things I see most that our struggles is we... Sometimes don't know how to approach God when we get into these messes. We think, man, I made such a mess of this. He doesn't want to hear from me. Well, that's not true. He wants to hear from you. The messes we find ourselves in sometimes or the fires we find ourselves in sometimes are learning experiences. They strengthen us and make us stronger and prepare us for the next fire that's on its way. Because when one's put out, there's another one coming. Amen? Being a Christian is not easy. Living life as a Christian is not easy. But it's the greatest thing you could ever do. The most rewarding thing that I've ever done in my life, and I'm sure many of you can testify to that. But what's great when you have a church family is not only does the Lord walk through that fire with you, but so does the brothers and sisters in Christ. Amen? Thank you all for doing that. You bet. You know, I don't know what's going to happen in this next couple of weeks. We don't know what's to unfold or where the world's headed. We know there are going to be some fires and problems and things going on. Continue to pray for this country and this world. Lift it up. Give it to the Lord because we really don't have control over that. Don't be afraid. Now, some people says the Bible says 365 times it says don't be afraid or do you not fear. That's not true. It's worded different ways, and they're from 50 to 75, depending on how you interpret some of it. Look at it. But we know because of God's word, when he says one time, do not fear or do not be afraid, there's no need to. If you truly believe and trust in the Lord, 
Are you reading your Bibles? If you find yourself in a scary place today, uncertainty, open your Bible. All the answers are right there. The best-selling book in the world has all the answers, and that's the Holy Bible. Amen? And once again, if you don't have one, make sure that you see us. We'll make sure we get one in your hands. And also remember, if you're going through that fiery trial, you got something going on in your life that you need some help with, you need someone to walk with you, call on the Lord and ask him to walk with you, but talk to you brothers and sisters right here. Say, man, I need some support. These firemen will tell you, we'll put on that heavy coat, that hat, and them boots, and we're going through there. We'll grab the fire hose, and we're ready to go. Lord will lead us, and we'll all be good. Amen? Don't give up. Don't throw in the towel and say, hey, it's just going to be like that. You don't have to smell smoky all your life. You can smell sweet if you count on the Lord. Amen? Let's go, Lord, in prayer. Father God, we come to you this morning. We lift this day to you, Father. We thank you for just the blessings and favor you pour out on us and we pour out right here at your church house. Father, we thank you for the favors and blessings to come as you have promised in your word. Father, we've seen fires and we've had tests and we've had burdens and everything going on right here in the church. There are people here today, some of them going through those uh, fiery trials right now and They've been through them, Father. But we know if we trust in you and we call on your name that you're right there with us. So, Father, this morning I pray that anyone here that's going through a fiery trial of some kind, Father, that they would seek you. When I say seek you, that they would seek your face and read your word and believe your word to be true. Father, that they might be strengthened, encouraged, And, Father, that they come out on the other side of their problem smelling sweet because of you. Father, we just thank you so much for this family that's here today, that they took their time to come and be in praise and worship to you. We thank you for our band that just brings music that opens our hearts and gets us excited to hear your word. And, Father, we just thank you for all the ministries and the leaders and the people in this church. And Father, as we move forward into this uh, fall festival we're about to have, Father, I pray that you give us the wisdom to discern what's real and what's not, that Halloween wouldn't be a pagan event, but an uplifting event that we might be able to share you in. So Father, be with us, be with everyone as they leave here and travel today, keep them safe. Father, we love you, we praise you, we pray that everything we did today was uplifting, glorifying, and pleasing to you. We ask this in Jesus' holy and precious name, amen.